Hello friends, in today's video, I will be talking about the basics of valgus intertrochanteric osteotomy. The valgus intertrochanteric osteotomy has been classically used for non-unions of proximal femur, especially neck femur fractures and in some cases of intertrochanteric non-union fractures also. So we will be dealing with all the basics that are required for the understanding of valgus intertrochanteric osteotomy. In proximal femur fractures. So the purpose of this lecture is to make you aware about the applicability of valgus intertrochanteric osteotomy or you can say VITO and biomechanics behind it and what are the patient factors which can affect the outcomes of VITO, the technique, available implants, whether to use bone graft or not and what are the radiological and functional outcomes of valgus intertrochanteric osteotomy. Is there any problem in future total hip arthroplasty with valgus osteotomy? We will be seeing that and what are the lacuna in the currently available research. First starting with the applicable First of all, you need to confirm whether the femoral neck has established non-union or not because sometimes the femoral neck can progress towards the delayed union. That means it is not showing any signs of loss of reduction or it may show some amount of compression but there is no loss of cross alignment. That means it is not tilting in either varus or valgus or not going into retroversion. Then we have to probably wait for some time to see how things progress. So once the non-union is confirmed, there is loss of reduction, there is no evidence of progression of union, then only we have to go for valgus intertrochanteric osteotomy then we have to rule out any infection and we have to get baseline parameters like clinical examination blood investigations like esr crp total leukocyte counts they should be normal before we proceed towards the valgus intertrochanteric osteotomy and radiological examinations include the radiographs and sometimes ct and mri can be performed if we have any doubt about the bone stock or any pathology that is going on in the proximal femur or femoral head and we have to rule out any systemic disorder especially the metabolic and endocrine abnormalities because they actually limit the outcomes of valgus intertrochanteric osteotomy that means the healing potential near the fracture site is already compromised therefore these patients are not the ideal candidates for valgus osteotomy we can look for the total hip arthroplasty or hemi arthroplasty depending upon the age for these patients then important thing the bone stock needs to be good because when we are doing osteotomy the purchase of our implant whether you we are using a blade or we are using a screw it is going to get purchased in the femoral head. If the femoral head is very weak, very poor bone is there, that means the purchase will not be good and there are chances that the valgus osteotomy may fail because of the early loss of reduction or resorption of the bone in the proximal femur or femoral head. So we have to get the vitamin D3 levels also. If they are normal, then only we have to proceed for the valgus osteotomy. If they are deficient, then we can start the vitamin D3 course for the patient so that the normal levels of vitamin D3 and normal bone quality is restored before proceeding to the surgery. Then starting with the biomechanics. For biomechanics, we have to remember three power types for fracture neck femur. The first is power type 1 in which the fracture angle is less than 30 degree to the horizontal. This line is horizontal. Here the horizontal line is in reference to the vertical axis of the femur. So if this is the axis of femur, this is horizontal line and angle subtended here with the fracture is less than 30 degree. For power type 2, it is 30 to 50 degree and for power type 3, it is more than 50 degree. And these two classifications are suggestive of relatively unstable fracture. Why? Because the vertical forces in this direction, they are more than the compression forces. The compression forces are in this direction along perpendicular to the fracture and the shearing forces are in vertical direction. That means against the line of the fracture. So the shearing forces gradually increase as we increase the classification of the fracture. So the purpose of valgus osteotomy is to realign these two fracture types to the power type 1 fracture. Power type 1. In power type 1 fracture, the weight bearing axis is nearly perpendicular to the fracture. That means any force because of the weight bearing will act perpendicular to the fracture and that will result in good amount of compression at the fracture site and ultimately the union also. The purpose of valgus osteotomy is to realign the fracture in line with the weight bearing axis of the proximal femur. So the important patient related factors which result in good outcomes are young healthy patients because of the good bone stock and lack of risk factors like smoking, tobacco chewing and metabolic disorders which, which can compromise the vascularity and the healing potential near the fracture site. And we need viable femoral head for good outcomes but be aware that AVN is not a contraindication for valgus osteotomy. Suppose if the patient is having AVN but he is not having any symptoms of pain then you can definitely proceed towards the valgus osteotomy. Sometimes the lateral part of the head is affected by the AVN then the valgus osteotomy is going to realign the femoral head 
in such a way that that part is not going to come in the weight bearing axis that means it is rather going to help in relieving the pain so valgus osteotomy can be planned in those cases also then good bone quality as i've already discussed is definitely a good indicator of favorable outcomes so let's start with the principle of valgus osteotomy so if we see this is the vertical line the femur anatomical axis is at 9 degree angle to the actual vertical line that means whenever you are standing the femur anatomical axis is actually tilted inwards 9 degree while weight bearing axis is directed 16 degree towards the proximal femur when compared to the vertical line that means the weight bearing axis now subtends the angle of 25 degree when compared to the sharp femur axis because 16 plus 9 degree will add up to make 25 degree and if we see the mechanical axis the mechanical axis is 3 degree inwards compared to the vertical line so these things are important for understanding the principle of valgus osteotomy so the purpose of valgus osteotomy is to realign the fracture in such a manner that the angle of the fracture is now perpendicular to the weight bearing axis that means the fracture line should be like this now the wedge calculation will depend upon the fracture angle so the fracture angle has to be corrected to 25 degree to the horizontal line whenever we are realigning the fracture so angular correction will be x minus 25 degree that means for example if angle is 50 degree 50 that means if we subtract 25 degree from that the correction will come out to be 25 degree so we'll have to take a wedge of 25 degree for correction irrespective of the implant we are using now the important part what should be the track of implant in the proximal femur that means in this region for that we have devised a simple formula by which you can easily know what should be the alignment of the either leg screw or blade whatever implant you are using in the proximal femur that angle will be implant angle minus 90 degree because the difference between the vertical line and horizontal line is 90 degree and minus correction needed if the value comes out to be negative that means you have to direct the leg screw or blade in an inferior direction to the horizontal suppose if it comes out to be 5 degree that means it is positive value that means you have to place the implant in this direction 5 degree above the horizontal if it is coming minus 5 degree then you have to tilt it downwards to the horizontal that means like this so that it is below the horizontal line we'll be coming to example to make things clear so suppose you are having a case scenario in which you need 20 degree correction for example fracture angle is 45 degree 45 minus 25 degree will be 20 degree so you need correction of 20 degree so if if you are using a 120 degree implant like a double angle blade plate or double angle dhs then to place a leg screw or blade in the proximal femur you need to use the formula 120 minus 90 minus 20 that will come out to be 10 degree that means it is positive that means you have to keep the screw track 10 degree to the horizontal and in an upward direction while for 95 degree blade plate the same formula will result in minus 15 degree minus 15 degree to the horizontal that will be very difficult to put that means you have to place the implant somewhere here it will be very difficult therefore whenever you are needing a good amount of correction use the higher angle devices like 120 degree or 130 degree that will create a positive value and your implant will need to be placed above the horizontal line and what is the use of double angle implant because they support the trochanteric region. They prevent the lateralization of the shaft and maintain the cortical continuity after valgus osteotomy. We'll see in the example, if we use the single angle device, what will happen and is it helpful or not? We'll see in the coming slides. So available implants are angled blade plates, dynamic hip screw and dynamic condylar screw. All can be used. Just one important thing to remember, if you are needing good amount of correction, use the device which is having a higher angle. If you are still confused, these angles are making you confused. So a simple thing is that just recall how much correction you need i think that will be the simplest thing so this angle is somewhere around 60 degree 70 degree almost vertical you can say so this much amount of correction we need this angle is a so th that thing you'll remember now play now whenever you are positioning the limb in c arm just superimpose your device on the affected side and this angle this clearance angle the angle between the shaft of the device and the shaft of femur should be equal to the amount of correction you need so if you need a amount of correction you need to make clearance of a here this will tell you exactly where you want to drill the track of the screw when you are using the dynamic hip screw double angle dhs and the blade whenever you are using the condylar blade plate so this will make the things simpler just superimpose the implant see how much clearance you need then that will tell you what is the track of the leg screw or blade 
now coming to the example in this example we are having the angle of 45 degree we want correction of 20 degree to achieve this angle to be 25 degree to the horizontal so this is the ideal angle we want so that correction is 20 degree fine if we are using 120 degree device we have to place the proximal arm of the device at an angle 120 degree minus 90 degree minus 20 degree 120 is the angle of the device 90 is the difference between horizontal and vertical line which is constant and correction required is 20 degree we have already discussed so 10 degree will be the angle of the implant so the implant will have to be placed like this it is 10 degree tilted to the horizontal line this is horizontal line in relation to the femur axis if you calculate this angle this angle will automatically come out to be 20 degree why because this is the amount of correction that will happen once we approximate the blade plate to the shaft and if we are using 130 degree angle device that means the alignment will be 20 degree to the horizontal that means we'll have more space to place the blade plate in the femoral head so higher angle more easier to place the implant and less interfere the need to place the implant so we can place the blade in 20 degree angle to the horizontal line so again the correction will remain same here also the angle will be 20 degree here also the correction will be 20 degree the only difference will happen in the placement of the proximal arm in the femoral head if we have less space inferiorly we can go for a higher angle implant if we have adequate space in the inferior part then we can go for a lesser angle implant also like 120 degree blade plate or in some cases 95 degree dcs can also be used when correction required is very minimal so for example this is our neck femur fracture non-union this is 120 degree double angle dhs which we are going to use for this technique so the fracture angle is 50 degree correction required will be 50 minus 25 degree and the guide wire has to be placed at an angle 120 minus 90 minus 25 that will come out to be 5 degree so the wire has to be tilted 5 degree above the horizontal line so this will be horizontal line somewhere here because the shaft humor is like this 90 degree will be like this so our guide wire is 5 degree above the horizontal line then we'll drill the track for the leg screw as we do in conventional DHS the wedge will be of 25 degree irrespective of the implant as we have already discussed so that we have taken out the wedge of 25 degree here now the clearance will remain 25 degree only this angle will remain 25 degree only because because we have used the 25 degree variable for calculation of the placement of proximal arm of our implant and then when we approximate the shaft of the implant to the shaft of the femur and removing the wedge that will automatically realign our fracture to the desired angle like this so the actual picture will look like this so your fracture has now well aligned it is almost orthogonal to the weight bearing axis or you can say perpendicular to the weight bearing axis so this is the way we are performing the valgus osteotomy using the double angled device now there are some arguments why not to use the single angle device is there any problem the evidence suggests there is no problem rather it is helpful there are some concerns that there will be overriding in this zone because we are using single angle device here there will be good cortical contact between the trochanteric area and the shaft humor here there will be a void but the the studies show that this void is not going to create any problem rather you can use the wedge that was removed to place bone graft in this zone as we have placed here the good thing is that the overall alignment of the shaft femur in relation to the trochanter will remain same as before the surgery but here it will be medialized that means the lever arm between the shaft femur and the center of head is shortened here this will result in need for excess force for abductor pull and the patient may actually get abductor lurch because of the abductor weakness so therefore the medialization can result in lurch also there will be medialization of the weight bearing axis so the shaft femur which was earlier here is now medial so automatically that is going to hinder the knee joint biomechanics also why because the shaft is medial now to get clearance on the ground the patient will try to keep the foot more lateral than the natural tendency so that will result in altered forces at the knee joint the double angle device will have shortened lever arm as we have seen medialization of shaft will be there as we have seen here and single angle device will help in maintaining the alignment like we have seen here and there will be no medialization of the shaft as we see here so is there any difference between the outcomes of angle device angle blade plate versus the double angle sliding hip screw you see there is an interface at the sliding screw there is interface between the leg screw and the barrel so whenever there is stress in this area there are chances of failure and the rotational stability of the leg screw is inferior compared to the blade plate see this is a horizontal implant while the screw is a round one so the head fragment can still rotate over the leg screw so although it doesn't happen very usual but there are chances and it is less bone conserving why because we have to drill the track for the leg screw so whenever the bone quality is slightly compromised then definitely 
the blade plate will be a better implant. As we have discussed about the rotational stability, an additional leg screw is sometimes required for the prevention of rotation. But in blade plate, it is not required. Why? Because it is single axis implant. It does not allow rotation of the femoral head. If we see the cross section of the blade plate, it will be a horizontal line. And the screw actually consumes good amount of space in the femoral head. So there is less space for bone graft and placement of any additional implant. While in blade plate, it is a horizontal line. You can place a full thickness fibula also in the proximal fragment. The benefit with the placement of leg screw is that you can control the rotation of implant even after placement of the leg screw. But if the blade plate is placed in the wrong direction, you'll not be able to control the rotation. And if you have placed it in a wrong direction, then when you are tilting the blade plate shaft to the shaft of femur, that will actually result in the angulation at the osteotomy side. So always take care whenever you are using the blade plate, your alignment of the blade plate should be perfect in AP and lateral views before committing to the fixation. And control compression can be achieved with the used double angle DHS but it is not possible with the blade plate. So we have to supplement it by the placement of a leg screw to obtain compression at the fracture site. And what about the radiological outcomes? So the radiological outcomes are satisfactory. We achieve more than 75% union with the valgus osteotomy and the AVN risk is very low after valgus osteotomy because they are concerned that valgization of the proximal fragment can result in abnormal stress and can strain the vascularity of the femoral head but the incidence is low and functional outcomes based on the current literature so functional outcomes based on the current literature show that weight bearing has to be started at around three four months after the union has been achieved we can start with total mobilization from the early stage but full weight bearing has to be started only after three four months and what about the pain more than 70 percent of patients obtain painless gait after the surgery and the pain is mostly because of the prolonged activity and that i've already told you that could be because of the strain on the abductor muscles because of the metalization of the shaft and limb length discrepancy it is very insignificant after the surgery limp usually associated with double angle devices as i have already discussed and the risk of malignment is associated with double angle devices because of the medialization of the shaft and there are risk of valgus at the knee joint because the patient will have tendency to keep the foot in a lateral direction to avoid rubbing with the other limb due to medialization and as far as the difficulty when thr is concerned the clinical evidence does not show any gross problem with the valgus osteotomy and the good thing about the single angle devices are that they they maintain the alignment of the trochanter with the shaft so in that manner the single angle devices are rather helpful whenever future THR is planned and malalignment I've already discussed so you see you see the shaft is metalized here so to keep the foot clear of the ground the patient now keep the knee in valgus so that can be avoided when we use the single angle devices clinical results are satisfactory with the use of single angle devices also they can also be used and whether to use or bone graft or not so currently there is no evidence in support or against the use of bone graft we can use but whenever we are doubtful about the bone quality so this is an example you see the fracture pattern here is here it is almost a vertical fracture and after doing valgus osteotomy we have realigned it and the outcomes are good the patient has good functional outcomes here also you see the fracture is almost vertical one after realigning it with the valgus osteotomy here we have used a single angle devices you see the shaft is not medialized you see here the single angle devices had not has not medialized the shaft the trochanter is in line with the shaft unlike in the previous surgery we have seen the shaft appears to be metalized. It is almost in line with the femoral head. Some deficiencies are there in literature. We need comparative studies between single angled and double angle devices to see whether the function is actually compromised or not with double angle devices and whether we need bone grafting or not. We need comparative studies with bone grafting and without bone grafting. And weight bearing protocol needs to be standardized. We still need good amount of studies to know whether to start weight bearing in uh, after the surgery or not because biomechanically it should be started. And there's need for studies whether the THA outcomes are actually affected after valgus endotrogenic osteotomy some difficulty is faced when medialization there but outcomes need to be studied so the take-home message is that valgus osteotomy is a joint preserving procedure for obtaining union in proximal femur non-union fractures union rates are high there is low risk of avian and it is a technically demanding procedure but can if done properly it, it is having fruitful outcomes and large angle devices are should be used for when high amount of correction is needed especially in high power angle cases and well planned osteotomy and implant placement can result in desired outcomes and you have to avoid double angle devices whenever you want to prevent the malalignment as we have seen in the previous slides thank you